Um, we are here with, and I don't want to mispronounce it, but Antonia. Or is yes, it Antonia? Antonia. Okay. Antonia. <laughs> no, Antonia, you had it right. I knew an Antonia. Wait, I had it right? right. <laughs> yeah, you were right. He's terrible at pronouncing things. Terrible. I mean, it's, okay. I mean, everyday words is, can be a struggle, but it's nice to meet I you. I feel that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to meet you guys too. Thank you guys for having me. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And you have a little bit of time to talk to us. And yeah. the reason I found you is because... I have been researching a story Mm -hmm. in Alaska, the memory cord killer, which we haven't done that episode yet. we've not covered that. There is a piece of that case where there is someone else involved, but he is not going to be charged. So I did my research on that portion and Hmm. it led me to Antonia, who has led at least one protest, I think, for that. And, And this interview is going to be more on your platform, which is the raising awareness for missing and murdered indigenous people, which is what you're really passionate about. So although I did want to get talk to you about your, you know, your protests with that case, I more want to, I'm more interested in knowing, you know, what, what you're doing in the field that you're so passionate about the missing indigenous women. So sure. So yeah, um, I'm glad you found me through my protests with Ian. We actually have held um, by protests now this Saturday, the Sunday is going to be our sixth outside his house. Um, so yeah, um, so I've been a missing and murdered indigenous people advocate since 2017. Um, my best friend was murdered in 2017. Um, her murderer was sentenced to prison and then another one of my best friends was murdered in 2020. So her murderer was sentenced just last year. So after they were both sentenced, I was like, I I don't know what to do with all of this knowledge that I've gained through those trials and through their, you know, learning about the legal system here in Alaska. So I started advocating for other families in Alaska. And I think I've advocated for upwards of 50 families now, um, just continuing to share their stories. I mainly focus on the stories that don't have enough attention as far as, um, you know, police investigations or I guess I focus on police accountability. It's interesting. A lot of the cases or at least one that she has sent to me. It doesn't get any attention. No, um, you'll find with a lot of these cases that I talk about, there's very little, if any, media coverage. Um, when my friends passed away, I almost had to beg the media to cover their stories and updates and stuff, which wow. is what led me to create my own platform that allows me to share these stories. And I, I've created a large following in Alaska and um, it's kind of spread across the U.S. too, but mainly in the Alaska so that I could say what I need to say and not rely on the media. And and real quick, so your your platform is mainly TikTok. So do you want to yeah. uh, tell us sure. the handle? Sometimes I even forget my TikTok handle. Hang on. <laughs> so it's at alaska.mmip, Missing and Murdered Indigenous People. Okay, gotcha. Can we quickly talk about the protest you're doing with, his name is Ian Calhoun, and then okay. we'll talk about the other. So, cases. I, uh, if you don't know anything about, he know, does the research and he tells me the story. So we, so if if you're wondering why this person does not know anything, uh, that's <laughs> kind of he's he's the storyteller and he tells me what happens. I <laughs> did brief her on it. So I think it was 2019. A a woman mm-hmm. found a memory card from a, a a South African native who is living in Alaska. He just got a citizenship, okay. and on that card was. The I don't know if you've heard the audio, Antonia, but it's terrible. Uh-huh. I was in court that day. Oh, geez. oh wow! It, it is. Also, did you see the video as well? No. So what they did was they played the the video for the jury and for everybody in the courtroom, but they put the TV against the um the gallery. So we saw the back of the TV, but we heard the audio. The judge wanted to protect the public from seeing the images, but he played the audio for everybody. Wow. Could you see the jurors like their faces? Yeah. I mean, it, so since it is the, the since the TV. TV back was to us. The jury was looking at us and so was Brian. It's horrendous. Anyway, she was tortured and was tortured in the on the video. She was killed and there was another man involved somewhat, not involved in the murder itself, but he had knowledge of the murder and the the body dump site. Okay. And in fact, it from the text messages and Facebook chats, it seems like he actually went and saw and visited and did whatever he did to the, the body from what I've seen. This part is getting absolutely no coverage. And it's crazy because this guy is out and he is, I think he he pleaded the fifth and he is getting out scot-free. So Antonia is doing a protest and she is the one that's on the the big, you know, the news sites covering it. So that 
that's the background. So can you Got tell it. us okay. your your take on it? Sure. So you kind of covered the the Brian Stephen Smith trial portion of it. So he was convicted just last February. But during the trial, I watched every single day, um, whether I was in court or, um, you know, listening on the Zoom. But whatever, there was one day when Ian Calhoun, who is his friend of a few years, was supposed to testify. And 15 minutes before he was supposed to testify, the defense attorney came and said, Judge, I just got this email from Ian Calhoun's lawyer saying that he's going to plead the fifth and, you know, he has a Fifth Amendment right issue. So they halted everything. They kicked everybody out of the courtroom. They held their confidential um, hearing where his lawyer basically said, you know, he, he cannot be compelled to testify if he can incriminate himself. And the judge found that valid, so they excused him from subpoena. Wow. Um, and after the trial was over, I was like, okay, so maybe they're just going to investigate more and maybe bring charges against Ian. Him, and right. And they never did. They never did. So after like four days, I was like, oh, absolutely not. And so I started this campaign to arrest Ian Calhoun, and I met a lot of people that have supported me through it, and we started a petition. We've been protesting almost every week, sometimes every two weeks if there's a holiday on the weekend. And yeah, it's just crazy like going through the text i'm sure you i saw on the yeah. change.org petition he says things like brian says hi are you awake like i want to share as he was murdering and torturing kathleen joe henry in that hotel room he was texting ian yeah. saying i want to share i yeah. mean and then, and then later they talk about the next day um brian and ian said they need to meet up in a secluded spot because brian had something he wanted to show him that he couldn't keep for too long um so they met at a park by ian's house and then and we know that they, they met right that we know that we, they met together all those text messages they were read in court and then later, when her body was found a month later, Ian sent Brian, the murderer, a link to the KTU news article saying, like, look, her body's been found. Oh, and they found it before it snowed. And then Ian says, but this means I'm off of the hook or something like that. What did he say? He did. So this is how depraved this is. Brian, the, the main guy, says, I did have fun, wanted to share. And then Ian is just talking to him. I mean, they're basically partners in crime at this point, you know, I mean, he should be 100 percent accountable. And, and the yeah. thing is, real quick, if these if this memory card wasn't found, was there any news coverage at all on Kathleen missing? Um, so, so let me just correct you really quick, because it wasn't actually a memory card that was found. So she, she lied. Um, so Valerie initially lied, who is the woman who found it. She said she found a memory card on the road because she was afraid of being um, you know, charged for prostitution and theft. So what happened was she was actually in his truck and he couldn't find his phone and she stole it and put it in her pocket and then moved the images and stuff to a memory card, which she then gave to APD. Yes. Gotcha. Um, yeah, and she testified and, in court too. Yes, she did. And because she was very brave for having done so. So back to your question, um, there, there was no coverage of Kathleen being missing. There was no coverage of Veronica being missing, which is kind of what happens in Alaska for missing and murdered Indigenous people um when they turned it in it kind of moved quickly but when you think back on it this probably would not have been investigated had valerie castler not come forward with the information he likely would just be walking free because these cases they do not get attention and i don't know if you're aware but he, his ex-girlfriend brian's ex-girlfriend reported him in 2018 gave apd evidence of his crimes and they ignored her wow and she later what? committed suicide because <gasps> what i didn't see that yeah. yeah so her name is alicia youngblood and she testified at his grand jury oh my god wow. so he was and if you if you look deeper into the case you'll find that they do talk about alicia youngblood um and they they pass it off they say that they were investigating brian from a prior case and that is why they recognized his voice so that was the case that because yeah, it was that, from alicia reporting him so he had it but it but he's married as well so he had a girlfriend a mistress and yeah oh <laughs> oh it's, so it's it's crazy because this guy has a whole youtube channel of what he, yeah he's like a tech guy and he he films like his video cameras and stuff like that yeah and it's just it's crazy and i mean he's got a he's got a south african very unique accent i can't do oh, it okay. but. yeah and that's the only reason they were able to recognize him from the video that valerie gave them is one of the officers was like i know that voice wow. the accent gave him away and yeah when he was getting interrogated i don't know if 
he thought it was a different woman or he mentioned Veronica Abachuk. Yeah. And did did so he just volunteer that? They him for eight hours at the airport when they um when he got off the flight from D.C. And by like the sixth or seventh hour, he went to the bathroom and they the police thought they were going to be done soon. And he told the trooper that was escorting him, do you guys have more time? Like, I'm going to make you guys famous. And then he admitted to Veronica's murder. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So the, if you look into this case, there's a lot happening here. It's not yeah. it's not getting the coverage because no. we, we do headlines every day. And that's and, how we first heard about it. And we we saw this probably yeah. since we probably seen it twice, like news articles. Mm -hmm. And I have all the Recently. RSS feeds for serial killer, mm -hmm. like all the things. It just is not getting any attention still. You want to know why? Because the victims are Alaska Native. Yeah. Do we think that it there are more victims that are attributed to him that just have gone absolutely untied I don't know because if you guys they saw maybe... my recent videos but a couple of weeks ago myself and the other advocates were at the courthouse trying to request records and we found one filing that was called notice of hybrid witness and we read through it and in there it says that they found photos in brian's actual iphone like his iphone that he uses every day not a burner phone of a woman who was beaten her pants were lowered to her ankles and she was laying in a grassy area and it was not the dates uh that veronica died or kathleen died so it was, I want to say a week after Kathleen died. So September like 16 to 22 are the dates that those images were created on his iPhone. And the woman was beaten. She had a swollen tongue. Her pants were lowered to her ankles and she was outside. And then we got another filing later that says that they tried to investigate it. They said that they found his geolocations in the area of Eklutna, which is where he drives out to do whatever. Um, it's towards where Veronica was dumped and they didn't find anything. And since then, they haven't done anything to try to identify by this woman. I got a call back from APD Homicide confirming that they never identified her. He told me they don't know if she was sleeping. If she was sleeping? I mean, did they not do a... He said, we haven't confirmed if she was deceased or sleeping. And I said, sir, why don't you find out then? Yeah, go check and right. see if there's anything there. Yeah. So it was, what's the possibility you think Ian Calhoun is involved more than... Because right now, if this was... Like, Florida is very strict, so we always use that. If this was Florida, <laughs> Ian would be life in prison easy. But now, yeah, um, I mean, you're protesting I, outside I of his know. house. I There's obviously something going on. Those text messages are very incriminating very that on top of him pleading the fifth because he didn't want to incriminate himself is very telling um you know we 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 were protesting in his neighborhood and some of his neighbors came up to us and said that he told people in the area that he he testified against brian and he didn't he took the stand and said I so plead he's the fifth. lying to community members saying that he testified and is trying to make himself look like the good guy when he's no, not it's, it's terrible so you protest outside of his house we did. Do, do, is he in there? <laughs> and we're gonna do it again on Sunday. I, I, oh my, I love, I love her. <laughs> <laughs> This is this you're you're doing exactly what he would do. Oh my God. Just take it out of somebody's yeah, house. We have a Facebook page where we post um videos and photos and stuff of our protests and just kinda update people there. But yeah, this is gonna be our second protest outside of his home. Um he's actually filed stalking charges against me. Um, but I've never tried to contact him ever in my life. And then when I called him out on my video later that day he went and dropped the charges. Oh wow. So, yeah. Wow. So what what is what has his reaction been from the protest has he engaged in in conversation with anyone that's been there or made um, any statements? so when we were outside of his house i his one of his neighbors told us that they had left town um i'm sure he saw our announcement of our protest does he live there alone and, um one of the apd officers that we asked to do safety patrols for us the protesters in the area came up to us and said that look we got a call from the people who own the home and they see you on their ring camera and they're accusing you of trespassing and then he told us like you guys are obviously not on their property you guys are fine just don't block their driveway if anybody comes and goes so they were not home but they were watching us on their ring camera i'm glad that you have uh the apd at least one officer there yeah yeah we're really we're, we're trying to look out for our safety over everything and that we did that because he filed the stalking charges on me did he file them uh filed any charges with any other protester or is that directed towards you alone? just me just me and i'm sure it's because my face is all over tiktok but mm -hmm. whatever <laughs>
Mm-hmm. I'm not the only organizer. <laughs> what is the police reaction to it? Has anyone ever commented or the news ever commented on this and why he has not been charged with anything at this point? You know, when we started protesting, we were reaching out to our media. Um, There was no good response from them. We've had one reporter cover it, um, but they're just... I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's because they don't want to get sued or what, but they just won't cover it. And we've we've had we've had Alaska's news source show up. We've had Anchorage Daily News show up and they just haven't covered it. Like they've attended our protests and taken photographs and video and just nothing. Wonder what they're afraid of. I mean, I can understand a, you know, a libel suit or something like that being a yeah. concern, but Yeah. Um I don't know. I it's... mean, Anchorage Daily News has talked about Ian and his text messages, but nothing really follow up from our protesting efforts. So it's not looking like they're going to charge him with anything. Unless they're building a case? They are not building a case. No, and I've I've been told from the lead detective and our district attorney that they don't have enough evidence. And even if he were charged for the charges that we want him to be charged for, like um, hindering prosecution and failure to report a violent crime committed mm-hmm. against an adult, those are only violations that carry a five hundred dollar fine. And th- this guy, not so much, yeah. But it's be- it's better than nothing. Yeah, exactly. That's what I say. It's better than nothing because if yeah. he were to get in trouble in the future, a judge will yep. look at his record right. and it will appear clean, and they will be less likely to be harsh on him because he looks like a good guy. Well, g- guess what his occupation is? I don't know if it's his full time occupation, but you'll you'll never guess it. He's a drummer for a death metal band. Yeah. Is, is that correct? Do, do you know the the band is it i'm surprised the band members haven't quit. Um, the band was called atonement denied they have also cleaned all their social media from everything they deleted everything huh. um but he does have another job i'm not sure where so yeah he he was a drummer and he was also like a talent scout for a music company which they fired him I, I oh, heard. Interested. so do you um yeah it's kind of well it's hard to to speculate i guess when given this but do you have suspicions that there's um whether it's him or someone else but do you think there is more um a, a, an active pattern going on where there's maybe someone actively still committing crimes in the area and murders and things not that i can could see um we haven't had i I don't want to speak out of line but i haven't seen any missing people show up since then um and if they are they're found shortly after can you talk more about so uh just in general i know you have the tiktok platform and but can you talk about um you said sadly your friend didn't get the the justice and that's why you started but any other cases you said you i think you've helped 50 families so far is that what you said i've I've advocated for about that many um just telling their stories so how does that process work do you do you just like post socially post about it or So what I do, I like to call myself a storyteller, basically, just to get the story out there because our media won't. Mm -hmm. Um, So what I usually do is these families approach me with a story. Um, They'll come with an autopsy, police reports, etc. And we'll go through them together and kind of create a storyline that I uh, do on my TikTok videos. So there there are lots. Uh, mostly I tell ones that are in my region of the Nana region in Alaska. Um, I'm not sure if you want to hear any of the specific, but there's lots of stories like the news leak that I sent you. Yeah, yeah sure. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, do you could, I, so I don't have we, we don't have TikTok. I have seen some of your TikToks and you are very passionate about what you do, which is, you know, that's a uh, magnetic. It definitely is. So, yeah, definitely tell us. about. Yeah. One. So the ones that I sent you, Susu Norton and Jennifer Kirk. Mm -hmm. They both died on a ex-borough mayor's property in Kotzebue, Alaska. They were both dating um, the sons of this ex-borough mayor. Um, Jennifer Kirk was accused of shooting herself um, with a gun that was too long for her arms. She was dating her abusive boyfriend for a very long time. Um, He was found holding her body. There was history of strangulation. Um, So those are red flags. And they just wrote it off as suicide without... they, they, They called it a suicide before they even got her autopsy after one day of investigation. 
Well, why do you think this is happening with uh, the indigenous, you know, women? I mean, are they, why, did, why does no one care? I, I don't know how to phrase that question. Like, I know I understand it's a hard question to ask, um, but it's racism. It's racism and laziness and negligence. Because there's a lot of tribes in Alaska. Yeah, we have 229 tribes here. Um, so we do have 229 tribes here. Not all of our tribes have their own tribal courts or tribal police like um, tribes in the lower 48. So you have to understand that we rely on state law enforcement and that is the problem. Um, so the fact that some of these villages don't even have law enforcement, so they're just allowed to, you know, exist without policing. Um, but the villages that Jennifer and Susanna died in, they are like a hub community, which is like a bigger community for the surrounding villages. So they actually have a police department. It's the Kotzebue Police Department, and they just didn't care to investigate. So for Susu, um, she, her murder was actually really is a homicide um, due to strangulation and she her fought her body was found in her boyfriend's house her head covered by a jacket and the Kotzebue Police Department just didn't investigate for about a year and then they passed it off to our missing and murdered indigenous people's unit with the Alaska State Troopers and that was last November and there's still no arrests but she was found in his home again there was history of abuse he kicked her in the stomach when she was six or seven months pregnant which led her to give birth early there's history of strangulation there and her death was real a homicide and still there's nothing is this more is more biased towards females uh, what what about the males in the community are they are the tribal community if this was to happen to the males would they get any justice as well or is it just no just i do advocate for men as well um they they don't really know that's very sad i advocate for one uh there's a man named kevin brian douglas lane he's from my home region but he lived in anchorage which is our biggest city he went missing in 2019 and our, nobody, no, there was no news articles about him. There was no really posts when he went missing. And he was found four years later on our base, on our military base. Oh, my gosh. And Jeez. there's no investigation. That's weird. Yeah. No, I'm just, it's hard to imagine that, especially when things are ruled, you know, homicide. I mean, you mentioned one where it certainly doesn't sound like it should have been ruled a suicide at all. But how can yeah. someone in, in that sort of circumstance, how can there? not be any charges that just my my brain's not computing <laughs> that at all i ask myself that every single day and that's why i continue to tell these stories and you know so people yeah. will know yeah. there's strength yeah. in numbers and i truly believe that you know as long as i continue to be allowed and tell the stories i my only hope is that they'll be like forced into doing something yeah. 100%. and you have you have quite a few followers on tiktok that watch your your stories so and, yeah. and it's growing yeah. And it's super helpful to have those people behind me because they they can see that this many people are mm -hmm. watching the story. You know, this many people know about something that you are ignoring. Yeah, so it puts a lot of pressure it on does. people that need to put, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, um, yeah. I wanted to ask about, so these villages, because I know in the, the Brian Smith case, both of those women experienced homelessness. Are a lot of these tribes like that? I mean, not homeless, but... Um, you know, or is that is that poor. common in some of the cases that you're seeing? Yeah, is that is that one of the common factors? Um, so in the villages, there's not really houseless people um, because the village kind of takes care of their own there. But in the bigger cities, that's kind of harder. And his two victims were struggling and were experiencing homelessness and substance abuse. And it appears that he targeted those those people because of their struggles. Um, I don't think the houselessness really is a big factor in all of the other cases I advocate for. Um, some of them, there is substance use issues. And when law enforcement sees that there are these substance use issues, whether it be drugs or alcohol, that's an automatic like red flag for them. And they just stop investigating because of it. Wow. Yeah. Because like there's this potential serial killer, like one more victim and he will be a serial killer as far as like FBI terms. But there's no coverage. And the only reason that it got so much coverage is because he recorded it. That's the only reason. And still there's not a lot of coverage. You know, there's also this element of him doing it for an audience because when he was doing the recording and you'll later hear, I think your husband is going to show it to you. Listen to the way he's speaking. He's saying things like, what are my followers going to think? You know, he's he's narrating it as if he's speaking to an audience. So there's also this 
question of was he putting snuff films on the dark web you know he was he was very tech savvy i i would like to ask your guys followers to go and sign our petition um i don't think i put the information out there so it's change.org slash arrest ian calhoun now um and you'll also find the information for it on my tiktok in my link tree so yeah so i said well good luck with the ian uh thing i mean <laughs> yeah did you ever think it's gonna come to any resolution you know i i have hope and i'm always gonna keep that hope but even if it doesn't his name is gonna be plastered all over the internet yeah i know that's right yeah it's bad it's um, again it's it goes back to the it's better than nothing and at least yeah. you are making that change happen and it, like what can you control what's within your power to do you are doing what is within your yeah power. so i had a thought one day and i made a TikTok about it it just makes me feel a little bit better when he googles his name all of this will oh, <laughs> <laughs> when he Googles his name, you're what he sees. <laughs> uh, one more thing. I know you got to go. Can you quickly exp explain the the palm face? Oh, what, what does that mean? The bloody. Oh, so the red handprint yeah. over yeah, your red mouth. We usually put it over your mouth. Um, it mm -hmm. signifies missing and murdered indigenous women. And that's kind of the symbol for the movement. Um, I've heard that it signifies, you know, the women that were silenced. So we walk around with that handprint to show that we are speaking for them. Um, other people have different meanings for it, but it's the symbol for missing and murdered indigenous women and people. Well, thank you for bringing a voice yeah. to them. Yeah, yeah, thank you. This has been really powerful. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah, for sure. And after you listen to that audio, um, please take care of yourself because it's very hard to hear. Yeah, um, it's really hard. I would like to call myself like a true crime junkie. Like I do, I live and breathe true crime and I was affected. So take care of yourself. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Definitely a good call. I just want to share um, uh, some of our supporters said they will absolutely be signing the petition yeah. to support you. Um, our our good friend Wolfie said she is doing such inspiring work by speaking for others who can't speak for th themselves. Thank you. So just wanted to make sure I relay the, the good vibes and sentiments. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you. Thank you, Antony. Anything else that you can think of that you wanted to share that you can? Um, no, I, I just want to leave you guys with while I appreciate you guys reaching out. Out. And I know you guys don't know a lot about MMIW, but I hope talking to me inspires you to learn more. And that's Absolutely. what my platform is about. Like, we love our allies that are not Indigenous, and we need you guys especially to stand with us. Absolutely. Well, we do. And I'm I'm looking forward to, you know, I think a lot of times we talk about the the killer's name, you know, that is, is the one that you hear in the headlines. But it is obviously, you know, most about the victims. And so looking forward to discussing the case and bringing that to light. Definitely. I always talk about keeping it victim-centered, so that's important. Well, thank you so much. Uh, thank have you, a guys wonderful rest of your day yes. you get a few more hours of daylight than we do yes <laughs> <laughs> um and let us know if you need anything and um please send us all those links so that way we can we can share them with our community as well awesome thank you so much and i'll talk to you guys soon all right okay. bye bye, bye. bye. kind of run this shit